Hello everyone and welcome to Shirstrand Industries, the division of the EDB where we actually make stuff. I guess the first video in this uh, sort of series, if you will, uh, was probably the LEGO Saturn V build I did a while ago. But we're going to have a few more because I recently became part owner of a 3D printer. Uh, specifically, it is a Monoprice Select 3D. I think it's about $300. And so, yeah, I've been 3D printing stuff. This is the first thing I printed it is an Orion space plane, Orion 3 space plane. This was using the, the filament that it came with, which is PLA. I've only been printing with PLA so far. And so there's a tiny little print, as you can see. A good thing to start off with because it's got a flat bottom. And uh, fairly simple, as you can see. Uh, it took about an hour to print this. And I'd say it takes like 10 grams of filament. Now that's important because people wonder when you print stuff, what's the material cost of it? And basically the filament is 20 bucks per kilogram. So for 20 bucks, you can make 100 of these. So uh, again, palm for scale. I guess is the best way to go here. Uh, you can see uh, another gadget over there, but uh, I'll do that in a different video. You will get to see the printer in action, and this is not the the build I'm really focusing on in this video. I've got a Normandy from Mass Effect 2, the Mass Effect 2 Normandy Mark II, I guess. Uh, but anyway, let's just uh, go through the prints I've got. So that, that was the first one. Still using the filament that it came with, I tried a much more ambitious Cylon Raider. And it's more ambitious because it's not flat on the bottom. It it didn't come out great. It's supposed to have guns, but the guns were too thin and snapped off when I was trying to clear the supports. And you can see it's a little bit raggedy um, on the edges. And uh, even after a little bit of sanding, it's uh, not not ideal. Oops, there we go. Um, it's the right shape, generally speaking, and probably will look a little bit better with some painting. But yeah. Uh, some work needed to be done, especially with regard to supports. I needed to figure out how to do that better. But again, this is uh, a fairly short build. I mean, the builds always take a long time. So if you're thinking like this, like printing paper, that's not how it works. Uh, so this is, everything takes, uh, the main commitment is time, not so much money. Uh, so yeah, that, that was number two. Number three was uh, Baby Groot. Uh, these all came from a website called Thingiverse, and I'll show you the software I used uh, to manage the prints in a sec. But this is Baby Groot, uh, another about an hour and a no, sorry, uh, this took much longer. This took about four hours, and uh, yeah, but uh, as far as material goes, you could probably print 50 of these uh, with a single spindle, so 20 buck spindle, and uh, it came out pretty good. Um, again, about palm sized little guy and it didn't need any support which is nice so yeah uh, that was easy to clean off no problems so that was baby Groot next to something much more ambitious a multi-part model all printed at once but many parts this was the Curiosity Rover and this model is actually straight from NASA uh, it was on Thingiverse that's thingiverse.com and so you can see the wheels turned. The wheels were each individual parts, but there, everything was printed at once. I think this was about four to five hours. I think maybe Groot was a little bit less. I think this was the four to five hour one. Um, but yeah, uh, basically easy to do. And uh, plastic model glue worked fine. So testers, uh, what you would normally use for plastic models. I guess uh, other people use super glue. But yep, yeah, that's... Uh, that's a curiosity for you. But the big one, uh, the one that led me to decide to uh, record the print process and make this video, is the Normandy. So you'll get to see the print of this in action, and substantially larger, and took a... Hold on, uh, let me put my palm underneath it for scale. Okay, so yeah, that is big, and it took basically the day. It's like 16 hours. And many, many, many parts all glued together. Uh, it did not come out perfectly. Um, if I could get it close enough to you. Uh, these bits uh, did not come out very well. There's, if you can see, there's sort of a hole on that bit there. I don't know why I made this gap. I also don't know why I made this gap here. 
So not perfect. Uh, could use a little bit of work. Um, probably will look better. It'll probably look a little bit battle worn, basically, at the end of the day after it gets painted. But I wanted to show it to you before it got painted. So let's see if we could line these guys up here. But yeah, that'll take you a day. But as far as filament goes, you could probably make like more than 10 of these with a spindle. So that's pretty good. Considering how much a model would cost, that means you can make 10 of these for for 20 bucks. But again, it's a matter of the time it takes. And of course, putting them all together, that takes additional time. Of course, that's also enjoyable, so that's good. Anyway, uh, on that, let me turn to the time lapse or, well, uh, just the recording of the print process or at least parts of it so you can see how that works. So what you'll see here is not quite the beginning of the build process. You can see that the build plate adhesion brim has already been constructed and it's already started out with the first few layers of the parts. I didn't add the audio because there was a lot of ambient noise the TV was on basically. Uh, so yeah, but it's fairly noisy. Though, as long as it's in a different room, I could still record at the same time it's running. So it's not that noisy, but you probably generally wouldn't want to watch TV while it was going, but it wouldn't be impossible. It's not like with a really loud microwave. This is in real time right now. This is not sped up, so this is how fast everything is moving. And you really need to calibrate the build plate properly, make sure that it's level. And so you take the nozzle set to home basically zero um, vertical spacing and then uh, put a sheet below it and make sure that it's just barely above the build plate and move it to each of the corners to make sure that that's the case all around. But you can see things be being built up. I didn't put any supports on here. Possibly for some of the parts it would have been better. Uh, some parts are not coming out exactly right because of the lack of support but it does make it simpler to clean it up afterwards and you saw the net result afterwards with the fully built model. So I think it uh, turned out pretty well anyway. This model from Thingiverse clearly was meant to be built without supports. Let's take a look at it inside the software that I use to set up the build. Okay, so this is Cura and that's C-U-R-A. And we have the model for the Normandy here and you can see how many parts were involved in the construction of that. Uh, the plate size is 7 inches by 7 inches for this particular printer and you, you know we could scale up here. This program is wonderful as far as the options it gives you but if you do scale up like that um, you'll see it's going to slice it up and you can actually see the layers that are going to be built by the printer once it finishes slicing them. It can interpret an OBJ file, which is a very normal 3D file, or this is an STL file. But right at the bottom, it's going to start off by building these. Now that's a bit of a problem, you see, and I didn't uh, let it do this. It only seemed to indicate that there should be support, well not support, but there are these build plate adhesion types, and it's going to build a brim only around those bits, and that's because not all of the model is sitting at the bottom of the, the build plate. So I had to actually shift it down. I think that's the z-axis. You can see the blue arrow. So I needed to shift it down by 0.1 millimeters, I think. And let's see it slice. While it's slicing, I'll talk about the other settings. Basically, the quality of your print is determined by the height of the layer. And we're at 0.1 millimeters right now. You can go to 0.15. I've only done 0.15 otherwise. And for this model, I did do 0.15. I'll keep the other settings. Uh, and the reason for that is because of the build time. If you do it at the higher quality, your build time is going to be really long. Here you can see it's indicating, it tells you ahead of time how long it's going to take. Uh, 13 hours and 20 minutes. It's lying, it takes longer. And 91 grams of material. And that's just spectacular that, that it uh, tells you how much material you're going to need. But I actually did it at 100% scale, but I'm not going to um, redo it, otherwise it's going to slice again. So you can see here, now that I've moved the model uh, lower, it's going to build a brim around all the parts properly, and then start building up from there, and that's what we want. And layer by layer, you can see if it's messing up or anything. It does, actually. Um, you can see maybe 
let's uh, go to the other view. Let's see, uh, look at the fin, the fin here. See, it has this shape here. But if you go to, to the layers and see what builds at the top, oops, And actually, let's get rid of some of the lower stuff so you can see more clearly. Um, well, actually, it's doing an okay job here, but it might clip some of that off. And sometimes, if it's clipping something very thin, we need to expand, do horizontal expansion. But that's going to slice everything again. So there are all these settings for this reason, and there are more settings here than you think there are because most of them are hidden. See, uh, these aren't checked off. That means those are hidden settings. This is sort of complicated and takes some some fine tuning, but you can see some tutorial videos on YouTube for that sort of thing. Everybody has their own settings, and each model has a different different uh, way to go. But yeah, infill density is how much structure is inside the model, and of course, if you put more structure, it'll take longer and take more material. Uh, the temperature that the material is extruded at is set as part of the file. You have to save the file and that this program will produce the file that the 3D printer can print. The 3D printer can't just print a 3D file automatically like an OBJ file. So you set the temperature everything has to happen in and that's based on the material and usually your spindle of material that you buy will tell you what kind of, uh, what kind of temperatures you need. It'll give you a range. And the material that comes with a 3D printer is not as good as the uh, the ones that you buy generally. It's sort of mm, lackluster material. The, the first spindle we got was much better. And uh, diameter is just based on the material and everything. And print speed, well, if you don't want it making mistakes, um, you know, you might want to turn that down. If you find out your printers are making a lot of mistakes, then you may want, might just want to slow it down. But of course, takes longer that way. And uh, support is if you got overhangs. Maybe I should load up a model with overhangs to show you. Well, the BSG Raider is probably, since you've seen that model, good one to take a look at. Hold on, let's get rid of uh, that. Where did the BSG, oh, there it is. Let's move it in. and it is now slicing but we sort of got a problem here because here there's the center portion that's sort of sitting higher than the ground right and if we take a look at the layers well it's gonna start mm, there we go it's gonna start building this stuff in midair that's not possible so it's gonna end up on the on the build plate but if it ends up on the build plate, it's not at the right level with respect to the rest of the model and everything is going to go horribly wrong. So that's what the support is for. So when it gets to layer 36, or I mean 33, it'll have some support. So we want to check that and then let's see how it makes the change here. Again, I'm not probably the right person to do the tutorial, but I just wanted to give you an idea how this all works. So now it's going to make this sort of lattice structure here along with the grid. I mean, not the grid, the brim. And so when it gets to layer 34 here, you can see when it builds those parts, it's going to be sitting on the grid. And so it'll have something to be placed on when everything, and when the cockpit gets built, it'll be sitting on that line so that it has some support and can be built properly. The problem then is, though, getting rid of these supports cleanly without it uh, damaging the model or leaving marks on the model that I have not yet mastered. Anyway, so that's what you do with Kura and how you get the models together ready to print. This can import quite a lot of things. It gives you a lot of information for you to use and basic tools. So yeah, I really like it. It's been very convenient. And here you see the final phases of the build process. You can tell by the lighting that it is now night. At the beginning of the build process started in the morning, and so quite a long build. But the printer held up, didn't uh, lose calibration or anything. It uh, worked pretty well. I think it's been improved over earlier models of this particular printer. And so, yeah, uh, quite a pleasant experience altogether. Uh, there, there have been mishaps, but usually that was because the build plate wasn't level. 
And so uh, reworking that and making sure we got really precise uh, definitely helped. Also, making sure that we got that brim, the build plate adhesion is important and s sports are important. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this sort of thing. I could create a full time lapse of future prints if you guys are interested, set it to music or maybe talk about it and uh, just speed it up a whole lot so you can see the whole thing. Probably speeding this one up would have been a uh, pain because first of all, just recording like 12 hours worth of printing is tough. But yeah, anyway, uh, so there you go. You could sort of see little stringy stuff on one of those parts that I had to clean off. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.